Welcome everyone. Happy Thursday. Thank you so much for taking the time to join today's webinar. I'm Renika Leibborn with Advanta IRA. Um, it's been a, a couple of years, but I'm really excited to welcome back Laura Oldini of Rich and Resilient Living. Thank you so much, Laura, for being our featured speaker once more. How are you? I'm very well and happy to be here to talk about one of my favorite subjects. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. And speaking of, Laura is going to share um, share how to align retirement funds with ethical and sustainable values, uh, some of the importance of impact investing, and just go over some of the diverse investment options from green energy to socially responsible ETFs. Um, but before I turn it over to Laura to share more about socially conscious investing, I do want to give you just a summary of how self-directed IRA works. Um, if you have questions, you know, feel free to put those in the question box. We'll get those answered as they come up and or allocate some time at the very end to, um, to make sure those questions are answered. So again, my name is Renika Lightborn. I'm one of the business development specialists here at Advanta. I've been an employee at Advanta since 2019, um, but I'm also an Advanta client prior to joining staff. So self-direction is something that I, that I actively do, something I advocate for strongly, both personally and professionally. If you have questions or you want to kind of talk to your exact scenario or do a one-on-one -on -one consultation, uh, you're welcome to give me a call or send me an email, or you can visit advanceira.com to, to schedule that consultation. So just a little disclaimer before we get started, uh, just know that at Advanta, we don't give any tax, legal, or investment advice. All of the information that's going to be presented today is just for educational purposes. As always, we encourage you to consult and confer with your professional team, like your CPAs, attorneys, financial advisors, before making any investments. So a quick takeaway, uh, if this is a new concept for you, just know that any IRA or former employer plan, like an old 401k, qualifies to be self-directed. Um, with self-direction, you always control, so you get to choose the investment that works best for you. Uh, so today, if we're focusing on ESG-related or you know socially conscious investing, if that's up your you know your alley, you can certainly um, find opportunities to do that within your self-directed account. And then also know that all of the income that's generated from that investment flows back into the IRA. If there's any related expenses, it's paid by the IRA. Just a little history about Advanta and who we are. Uh, we've been in business for 20 plus years now as the leading self-directed IRA administrator in the industry. Um, while we don't give any tax, legal, or investment advice, our team is comprised of attorneys and also certified IRA service professionals. Uh, that's a designation specific to our industry. Um, our headquarters is located in, in Largo, Florida, which is the Tampa Bay area, but Advanta has an office in Atlanta. Uh, but we do work with clients nationwide. Uh, we have a little over 2 billion, 2.6 billion under administration. Of course, um, one of the, the focus, our areas focus is providing our clients that concierge style service where as a client, you have a dedicated account manager or direct point of contact, but it also features um, you know, guest speakers and experts and practitioners such as Laura coming in and knowledge sharing with you all the different types of investment opportunities uh, that you can do within your self-directed account. This webinar is recorded. It's going to be uploaded onto our YouTube channel and also our video library within 24 to 48 hours. So I encourage you to, you know, check, check it out. For other events, visit our Advanta IRA events page. We have, you know, upcoming events, guest speakers. Also too, I would encourage you to check out our blog and uh, my colleague Alex Perney hosts our uh, uh, podcast. Uh, great content, great information, uh, everything related to, to self-direction. So exactly what is a self-directed IRA? Uh, very simply, self-directed IRA just means that you as the account owner, you have complete control over the retirement funds, you have complete control over the investment decision. It really allows you to diversify outside of the traditional stocks and bonds. It allows you to invest in something that you know and understand something that's near and dear to you. So again, if it's ESG or you know something related to renewable energies or you know solar, you know, solar panels or recyclables, anything that that's near and dear to you, that's considered impact investing, um, you, you have the option to, uh, to invest in using self-directed funds. So why do people choose to self-direct? You can look to self-direct for many different reasons. I'll touch on three of them. One, it's a new source of capital for you. So again, if you have funds sitting in an, uh, an old 401k or an existing IRA, instead of taking out a bank loan or tapping into that rainy day fund, you can elect to move those funds over uh, to make your next investment. Two, the ups and downs in the stock market. Uh, you have the ability to diversify with, uh, with self-direction outside of the traditional stocks and bonds, uh, investing in you know, renewable energy or you know, some, a tangible asset like real estate or you know, farmland. 
uh, it gives you that, that ability to diversify. And then, of course, the tax benefits, having those rents, those profits, those dividends flow back into your retirement account, tax for your tax deferred, depending on the type of investment that you, um, the type of account that you have. In terms of the different types of accounts that can be self-directed is the ones that you're already familiar with. For individuals, you can invest um, using a traditional IRA, which is pre-tax, meaning you get the tax break up front, you pay taxes later once you reach retirement age of 59 and a half. With a Roth IRA, it's post-tax, after-tax dollars. You're electing to pay the taxes up front, grow that account over time. As long as you've held that Roth account for at least five years and you're 59 and a half, which is the, um, the IRS retirement age, when you take funds out, it's those distributions are tax free. If you are an entrepreneur, you have a side business, a small business, you can certainly look to self direct SEPs, Simples, or Solo 401ks. Uh, solo 401ks, a lot of uh, investors like yourself like the Solo 401k if you're eligible for it, just because you have higher contribution limits and you have some, some greater flexibility. If that's something of interest to you, feel free to, to reach out to me and we can discuss that more in detail. Some less known accounts that can also be self directed. Uh, that are still very important or, you know, educational savings account for your kids um, or if you have a high deductible insurance plan uh, to cover medical related expenses, you can look at yourself direct an, uh, an HSA. Again, any former employer plan, which includes 401ks, 403bs, TSP type plan can also be self-directed. Uh, you can still make annual contributions for 2023 up until tax filing deadline, uh, which is April 15 of this year, unless you do an extension. Um, but for 2024, the IRS did increase the contribution limits uh, really quickly for traditional IRAs, traditional and Roth IRAs. If you're under the age of 50, you can put in 7,500. If you're over uh, 50, you, you have an additional thousand dollars where you can put in uh, $8,000 as long as you can show you have earned income. For a SEP IRA, uh, you can possibly contribute up to 25% of your earned income not to exceed 69,000. Uh, same thing with the solo 401k, you have the option to contribute up to um, uh, 69,000. With a solo 401k, you get to contribute twice essentially. You get to contribute as the employee, but also match as the employer. When you match as the employer up to 25%, um, so again, you have that higher contribution limit. The ESA dollar amount remained the same, where you can put in 2,000 per year per child. Whereas with the HSA, we did see a bump uh, for individual plans. You can put in 4,150. A family plan, you can put in 8,300. Uh, with an HSA, if you're over the age of 55, uh, you have that additional thousand dollar catch up. So the process for us, you know, once you're ready to, to get started, you know, you're, you know, feel comfortable like this is the direction you want to go. The process with us is pretty straightforward. Uh, step one will be filling out the application. Uh, you can do that directly on our website or you can reach out to myself or one of my colleagues and we can provide you the, the DocuSign version to fill out the application. Uh, typically, we get your account open within 24 to 48 business hours. We do pair you with a dedicated account manager, someone who's going to be with you for the life of your account when you're ready to make investments. Uh, step two is funding the account. Uh, there's a couple ways you can fund your account. You can make an annual cash contribution as long as you have earned income. You have the ability to transfer as much or as little as you want to or need to from an existing IRA. Or if you have an old employer plan like an old 401k or TSP type plan, you can elect to do a direct rollover of those funds. And then finally, step three is what is it that you want to invest in? Again, uh, today we're going to be focusing on, you know, the eco-friendly or socially uh, conscious investing. So if that's something that aligns with you, you can certainly find opportunities to invest uh, in your, your IRA with that. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Laura. Just bear with me. Let me make you the presenter. Hello, everyone. I'm delighted to be having this conversation with you today. It is one of my favorite topics, as I mentioned. Okay, let's see. All right, wonderful. So yes, we're gonna talk about how to find socially conscious investments. And as Renika mentioned, the name of my business is Rich and Resilient Living and a little bit more about myself. So uh, despite the fact that this picture shows me in front of Mount Rainier in, <laughs> near Seattle, I actually live only about 20 to 30 minutes from the Advanta corporate headquarters in Tampa Bay, Florida. And I am a green living and money coach who, um, you know, started out very interested in the environment, ended up after college becoming a Peace Corps volunteer and teaching English overseas, 
for a while, and then after that worked um, jobs that, you know, in diplomacy and international education, traveling a lot overseas and really seeing some inequality and injustices and um, coming over time to, you know, wanting to be responsible to save and plan for retirement, but not do it in ways that were negatively impacting others and the environment. And also just not wanting to prepare for retirement in way by investing in things that feel like they could potentially destroy that very future that I am trying to prepare for. So I, um, you know, I don't have a background in finance or um, banking or anything legal, but I was, you know, investing according to my values was very important to me. So I started down the rabbit hole of exploring other options. And so what I'm sharing with you today is what I've learned on that journey. And um, part of my journey was learning about self-directed uh, retirement accounts. And so I mentioned Advanta. I've been an Advanta client for probably six or seven years, ever since I opened my self-directed IRA. And just um, for context, I have a self-directed IRA, and I took the next step and created a checkbook LLC within that. So I don't have to get each investment I make approved by Advanta or have Advanta cut the check. I have the checkbook and I go ahead and cut the checks and um, have less interaction with Advanta than um, other, um, of their, others of their clients do. But that's not to say I haven't enjoyed my interactions with them, on the contrary. So similar to what Renika had, just another to dis disclaimer to be transparent and clear. You know, again, my, my master's degree, as it says, is in Russian and East European studies, is, which is not something that's going to you know, hold up all that well in terms of giving financial advice. And also, like she said, this is for educational and informational purposes only. Again, I'm sharing what I've learned once I took that leap down the rabbit hole of researching how I could align my money with my values. So uh, a, a simple framework that I've encountered that I think um, clearly encapsulates what many of us think about when we come to socially conscious investing is trying to achieve this triple bottom line. You know, we, often, we hear a lot about the bottom line. And when we hear that, that's always that bottom circle profit. But if we're thinking about socially conscious investing, I'm guessing if you're here, you also are interested in achieving more of this triple bottom line, that area where these three concentric circles of people, planet, and profit overlap so that we're equally valuing people, planet, and profit and not solely focused on extracting that financial profit. So I just share this, as, you know, again, this triple bottom line, I think is a nice introductory, simple framework for the, the thinking that's involved and the intention that's involved with socially conscious investing. And taking it a step further and expanding this thinking, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Adasina, but they've prepared this um, in investing spectrum that I think is quite helpful and lays this out in a very concise and digestible way. Adasina is uh, a company that um, an investing firm started by a black, uh, a female black lesbian. And so their mission is very much focused on what's referred to as social justice investing. And so it, within their work, they created this spectrum that we're looking at. And I'm not going to read it word for word, although I would like us to take a minute to look at that first column on the left, the extractive column. And you can see across the top, we've got extractive, less extractive, restorative, and regenerative. So if we focus our attention on that first column, this extractive column, this is where most investing resides, especially if we're talking about Wall Street investment offer, uh, offerings, these traditional, more conventional investing 
uh, um, opportunities. And so as it says, those investment opportunities, if we're um, going down that column, they're prioritizing financial returns without considering the social impact. So again, Adasina is focused on social justice. We could add in here that without considering the social or environmental impact. So that, you know, we're very much stuck in this extractive economy, this extractive investing mindset. Um, but if we're looking at socially conscious investing, we're looking to move beyond the extractive. And again, the markets, these are the traditional, if we're going down that first column, the traditional public and private private financial markets are steeped in this extractive um, end of the spectrum. And so that's looking at the bottom there on the impacts on social justice. And again, we can think about the negative impacts on environmental concerns as well. So it disregards negative social impacts, exacerbates inequitable power structures, and capitalizes on unjust financial systems, often harms vulnerable communities and actively subverts social justice. And I think we could include environmental justice as well. we can definitely include environmental justice here as well. So just to, to set the framework of the thinking and the conversations, this is often, this spectrum is often used in these deeper conversations that are happening around social socially conscious investing. And just to go, across the top two um, uh, rows uh, quickly, you know, we get to less extractive and that's where we get to the ESG, which stands for en environmental social governance um, and the socially responsible investing. And so these ESG and socially responsible investing options, this less extractive um, column still keeps us generally in the stock market on Wall Street, but these are the options on Wall Street that are less extractive, less harmful. And then we get to restorative, which is the social justice and the impact investing. And you see that you're, you're starting to move out of the, the stock market here for the most part. Um, well, this does say traditional public and private financial markets still. So there, there's still some of that, but we start moving away from the stock market. And definitely when we get into the final column, the regenerative, this is the impact investing, investing in the living economy. Um, this is where we're moving out of the stock market. And this is where the, the value of the self-directed IRAs really come in because we need that, um, that flexibility, the option to go beyond Wall Street with our retirement savings to get into these truly regenerative investments. And regenerative here is this idea of, you know, we've got restore before that, that's great. We want to, we've got a lot of um, depletion, you know, there's been all this extraction, so we want to restore, but we also want to regenerate and we want regenerative investments. So if you think about forests and ecosystems and nature, nature is continually enriching itself through these synergistic relationships and interactions. Um, you know, like a chicken, you could think of having chickens or fruit trees as really regenerative investments because they're going to continue to reproduce and they're, they're adding value and in terms of regenerating our planet and our ecosystems. So we're gonna start um, by looking at still on Wall Street, these conventional, um, brokerage firms, what, what are those ESG and SRI investment um, investing opportunities within these conventional private markets, private equity or uh, the stock market? So you've probably heard of Vanguard and TIAA. These are two um, conventional brokerage firms that offer these, uh, these SRI, these socially responsible um, funds that have you know, stocks that you can buy that are, you know, less extractive is what it was in that column in the, um, in the previous screen. TIAA is another well-known one. You know, they have the TIAA Crop Social Choice Equity Fund. So if you are, if you do have money in some of these conventional brokerage firms, there are SRI ESG options within them. And there are also socially conscious fund managers that have been around for you know, 20, 30 years 
that have um, curated ESG and SRI mutual funds and ETFs as well uh, that um, a lot of socially conscious investors who are still in the stock market prefer to work with. So Green Century Funds is one, Impacts and Parnassus. These are a couple, several of the well-known, uh, more socially conscious, not just conventional brokerage fund managers that are out there. If you're looking to find those, um, those funds still in the stock market. And then I wanted to share this because this is a good framework for uh, displaying how socially conscious investing on Wall Street is conceptualized because it, social, socially conscious investing on Wall Street is very much about exclusion. You know, it's, it's about filtering out the really most extractive funds and finding the less extractive funds that are there. To my mind, there really truly is, and as that, um, that spectrum showed, there is no regenerative investing on Wall Street. Just by the nature of that being beholden to the shareholder, it, the profit is emphasized over the people and the planet of that triple bottom line. So you can't truly get this regenerative investing. And so even if we're looking at the ESG and the SRI investing in the stock market, we're doing it by exclusion. So as you, you look at these um, images across this um, visual I'm sharing right now, you can see the fossil free funds. So within that fund, you would still be, you know, you wouldn't, they would have, Oh, they would not be having your money invested in fossil fuel companies, but you would still be probably investing in the major financial industry companies that fund the fossil fuels <laughs> industry. You know, you'll still be investing in companies that are have support, you know, extractive agriculture practices. So they're simply filtering out the worst of certain categories. And it's, there isn't the, you, you don't invest in the solutions in Wall Street, so to speak. You're just investing in less bad, even when you are in the ESG and SRI funds. So this just shows, I like this way of how it shows this way of thinking. You know, the, the bottom left is the prison free funds. So with our, privatized prison system, incarceration system in this country. There, you know, there are pension and retirement funds that are profiting off of these private companies that now run our prison system. So there's an incentive in place to keep people imprisoned. You know, it adds that financial incentive both on the side of the private companies that are running the prisons and the side of the companies that are able to access very low you know, and um, you know prisoners as laborers and pay them very little money. So just another way to think about these screens. And if you are looking to invest in these SRI um, and ESG or environmental social governance mutual funds and ETFs, there are a number of screening tools that can help you um, look at those and make find the best options for your values and your concerns. And so in the top left, we've got the As You So Invest Your Values screen. That's probably the most well-known. Ethos is another one, the one on the right. And then the heart rating has, um, has, may have been around the longest. That's pretty well-known too. Uh, so those are uh, three options for you if you are looking to keep your money in the stock market and want to screen, learn more about those funds. So let's talk about, as we move into what are the uh, ways we might think about with, with self-directed IRAs or retirement accounts to uh, look at this, to think about socially responsible investing. And I wanted to hit on a few of the advantages and disadvantages of pursuing socially conscious investing through these accounts. I would say, as I've already alluded to, that you know, because the truly regenerative end of the spectrum, those investments, they pretty much don't exist within the stock market. 
And so if we want to be investing in those types of things with retirement funds, self-directed retirement accounts are the best tax advantage tool I know of to be able to do this. And I, um, another advantage I would say is that even if you are investing in the ESG and SRI investments, those are coming under scrutiny by Republicans, and it's possible that there'll be there, you know, there'll be fewer and fewer options. I don't know. There, the Republicans are definitely pushing for ESG and SRI investing not to be allowed in like public pensions funds in their state. So it's just it's something that's coming more and more under attack in the stock market. So again, if we're doing it through our self-directed our self-directed IRAs, we have more freedom and leeway. And then in terms of disadvantages, I will say that we're going to talk about a wide assortment of investments. And to my understanding, most people that have self-directed IRAs tend to primarily invest in real estate, which kind of which keeps it nice and simple. I mean, you learn the rules the, what applies within um, self-directed retirement accounts. But when you start looking at regenerative investments, there are all kinds of investing opportunities, whether it's in LLCs, whether it's real estate, whether it's, and again, we'll go into some things. So there's a lot more to keep track of. There is a lot more potential for uh, self-dealing or UBIT. And so, it definitely is a commitment to want to pursue socially conscious investing through a self-directed retirement account. And it's a commitment that is important to me and I've stepped up to make. <laughs> and I'm learning a lot and I'm making some mistakes along the way. And also to introduce this idea, so I mentioned the triple bottom line of equally valuing people, planet and profit. And similarly is this idea of patient capital. So much of investing is venture funds, venture capital and hedge funds. And it's like, how do we extract the quickest, fastest, largest profit? And that's just not true socially conscious or regenerative investing. It doesn't mean that we're not thinking about profit with this, but it's a, you know, being open to this lower, slower, pay, more patient rate of return and recognizing again that triple bottom line that the, it's not the, the money isn't the only return you're getting. You're, you know, you're improving the potentially the air quality for, <laughs> for the air you breathe, you know, the, the health and nutrition of the food you and the rest of us are going to eat. You know, there are there are other bottom lines and the way that our investments impact other people. So again, just keeping in this mind this idea of patient capital and these regenerative investments, for the most part, they're not those extractive investments that are going to have the 10, 20, 30, 40 you know, amazing rates of return. That's not the point of socially conscious investing. So one of the gateway investments that I always consider uh, or encourage people to consider as they're thinking about aligning their money with their values is this idea of impact banking. Because as I mentioned before, the, the major banks, all of the majors that you could think of pretty much, they're using, they're funding the fossil fuel industry. And so if you are concerned and want to keep your money out of fossil fuels, starting with where you bank, is a good way to make a positive step in that direction. Uh, and more than that, you know, banking, where you bank puts money, makes it accessible to a community because it's being held at a bank in a community often. And that's what we can do with impact banking. You know, if, if you haven't already started with banking with a, you know, a, a non, one of, a, more impact oriented bank, that's something to consider. And credit unions are, you know, a well-known option and they are much more socially responsible in that they keep money in a community and they 
um, lend and invest that money within the community. But there are other options as well. You know, we have in the US, I'm presuming everyone's based in the US, a Native American bank. So if part of your socially conscious mission is to help the indigenous populations in our country, you could look into opening a bank account with the Native American bank or getting a certificate of deposit. You know, you can have certificates of deposit within your self-directed retirement account. You could open a certificate of deposit with, you know, with the Native American bank. Yeah, then there's also Mighty on the bottom right corner. This is a um, website you can use to search for socially responsible banks around the country and find banks. You know, here where I live in St. Pete, Florida, there is, I think it's called the Climate First Bank. So, you know, they're very interested in solar energy, you know, and climate solutions. So that's another bank that you would learn about if you searched in the Mighty Deposits. I believe the full website is Mighty Deposits. Um, in their search engine, you would find options for more socially conscious banks. Some of them are going to be community development investment funds, CDFIs, that are based in low income and marginalized communities. And so again, if you put your money, you know, your money's not sleeping in a bank when you put it in there and we can put it in banks where it's circulating in communities and having a positive um, benefit instead of supporting the fossil fuels industry and predatory lending practices. All right, and talking about some impact investing pioneers, again, we've moved out of the stock market these are um, investing opportunities outside of the stock market that can be part of a self-directed uh, retirement account. So socially conscious investing, you know, we've started to hear more about it, you know, in the last five or 10 years, but it really started evolving uh, around, around apartheid, you know, in South Africa with, uh, I think, especially with Quakers, you know, not wanting their money to be supporting apartheid, apartheid in South Africa and other things that they did not feel aligned with their values. And so there are some of these pioneering companies that have been around with their offerings for a while. And one of them is the one on the left, the Calvert Impact Capital. They have a community impact note. And then RSF Social Finance has a social impact fund. And you know these are long established options that have been providing patient capital returns to people probably now for 15, 20 years or more. So you know these are these things have been around for um, these opportunities have been around for a while. There are definitely a lot more opportunities these days, and I'm going to move on to those. But just to say that there are some you know, long time options that if you're looking for more established investment funds, these are some options. And again, it's called a social impact fund, but that doesn't mean your money is like in a mutual fund. These are funds that are putting your money to work in, um, you know, low income marginalized communities that, that need these type of resources. Okay. Another option for socially conscious investing is working through the crowdfunding platforms. Now, most of the crowdfunding platforms like WeFunder and SeedInvest primarily uh, um, offer up conventional type businesses, but we can filter the options and look for more socially conscious investing opportunities, companies that are seeking startup funds on these crowdfunding platforms. And so um, WeFunder and SeedInvest are two of the most well-known, but there are a couple, there are others as well. And I have only used WeFunder of the two on the screen. And I can share that that first image on the left is the certificate of investment that I received from one of the first investments I made through my self-directed IRA. It's, I made this, I bought, um, you know, invested in this Native American food pro um, products company that is run by Native Americans, and that was offered on WeFunder. 
And I think this is the coolest certificate of investment that I will probably ever, <laughs> ever receive. It's just beautiful. And that was important to me to put my money to work supporting a Native American business. The, um, the image from the bottom right is another investment I've made through crowdfunding, crowdfunding also through WeFunder, and that's in a company that provides a, a platform, an app that helps farmers connect with growers, and it's really helping his, our Hispanic migrant workers um, connect with opportunities for work on farms and for the farmers to to provide really good support, the support that these migrant workers need. And so it's been neat to watch what's unfolded with that company. But these are things that I found through crowdfunding. Um, certified, I just want to mention certified B corporations. Uh, these are, this is a, um, a certification that businesses can get to show their commitment to the triple bottom line, essentially. So as you're you know, searching to learn about businesses, to find businesses to invest in that are socially conscious, you know, if you see the certified B Corporation, you know, people there are quibbles about the certified B Corporation, but overall it's definitely a step in the right direction. And it does show an indication that um, that a business is thinking about a triple bottom line. So that can be a help helpful way as we're looking outside of the stock market to assess businesses we might invest in. And that, um, I'll just go back, you can see in the bottom right corner of that Native American certificate, there's the, the B Corp logo, logo there. They are a, a certified B Corp. Okay, moving on. So impact investing and investing directly in communities. There are a number of community investment funds throughout the country that you can invest in even if you don't live in those communities and they'll put your money to work um, in you know, like nonprofit projects in those communities. So that reinvestment fund on the left, that one is specific to Philadelphia. Uh, you can look into that. And then WASIP on the right, that's the Washington Area Community Investment Fund. That's actually Washington, D.C. And that fund puts investors' money to work supporting um, low, to low to moderate income entrepreneurs, so largely entrepreneurs of color in Washington, D.C. Another area where we can put our money to work through self-directed retirement accounts is investing in renewable energies and renewable solutions. So Raise Green is a kind of crowdfunding platform as well, but they're focused on these renewable energy solutions. So that's another website you could go on to and look for um, investing opportunities. This one, you wouldn't have to screen to know that they have a, a, a socially conscious mission. They're there because they do. That's the nature of the Raise Green platform. And so is the same with the Energia on the right. I'm less familiar with Ener Energia. I have done some investing through Raise Green um, and you know, have been receiving dividends and returns on those investments. So I can speak more to that. Uh, and so again, with the self-directed IRA, I, I think most people do come to it for real estate and we can continue to do that within the socially conscious way of investing, whether that is, um, you know, being creative with the real estate we're buying. So, you know, I think even assembling a rental portfolio, a rental property portfolio, excuse me, portfolio in a way that doesn't exacerbate local affordable housing issues, you know, trying to provide solutions, um, creative solutions, maybe buying property and then um, selling, what is the, the term for the financing where it's owner financed and your owner financing at a, at a reasonable rate, you know, giving people an opportunity to own property that wouldn't be able to necessarily qualify through a conventional mortgage. That picture on the left, that socially conscious real estate investing, that's a guest blog post on my blog from someone who turned their rental property into a sober living home. You know, she was very mission driven because of an unfortunate, you know, un 
unfolding with one of her friends battles with alcoholism, but we can think about owning property. There's so much potential for socially conscious investing around real estate because of how challenging afford our affordable housing issues are right now. So I really would love to see people come up with create creative solutions for using self-directed retirement accounts for that. And then the image on the right, this is a website um, called Small Change. You can see that in the bottom of, on the bottom of that image, Eve, Eve Picker founded this platform. So this is kind of um, a, a crowdfunding investment website where you can find real estate projects, develop, development projects, socially conscious real estate development projects, you know, on a larger scale, like apartment buildings or, you know, a neighborhood block. And you can be one of many investors in these projects that are more, um, you know, this impact real estate investing. So that's another way you can get into real estate investing in a socially conscious way. Uh, regenerative agriculture. So regenerative really got started throwing around in this space of socially conscious investing because of regenerative agriculture and people's growing interest because our soils are so depleted. So much has been distract, um, extracted from our soils, we need to regenerate them. And so there are plenty, you know, a number of options for investing in regenerative agriculture. And one of the more popular ones is Steward. And similarly, it's kind of like a crowdfunding platform. I think it's gosteward.com and they make loans to regenerative farmers and you can um, be part of making loans to regenerative farmers through the Steward platform. And then the picture on the right is just my own effort here to um, invest, part of what I'm going to talk about in the next slide or two is local investing, because that's really important to me. Our area's um, longest operating organic farm was at risk of closing down. It was run by a nonprofit, and it had just been mismanaged by some very wonderful dedicated volunteers, but my, and one of my friends who stepped up to spearhead saving the farm and a bunch of us made you know patient capital loans to him which have been paid back to save the farm so there may be even you know organic and regenerative agriculture investments right around you that you can be making if that's of interest to you and then so yes local investing uh, that was a big part of what i want to support with my money because I want to move my money off of Wall Street and onto Main Street. I want to live in a thriving, vibrant community. And if I'm, if I'm sending my investing dollars out of my community, how do I expect to, to have a vibrant community to live in? So local investing has been a big, um, a, a large importance to me. And it was actually a big part of why I chose to go with Advanta, other than, of course, you know, they're a good company, they have good reviews, I've had good experience with them, but I wanted, I loved that I could work with a custodian company that is in my local economy so that again, even my um, custodian fees are circulating longer in my local economy. And so these are some local investing resources. Slow Money is a group of people that are interested in, in investing in their local food shed. And there are slow money chapters in a few areas around the country. You can look to see if there's one near you. And it was actually at a slow money meeting in Northern California when I was in San Francisco at one point that I actually first learned about self-directed retirement accounts because that's how the slow money members were able to use their retirement funds to invest in local farms and local food businesses. The image on the right, that's the Local Investing Opportunities Network that's out in Washington State. And that is a network that helps connect people who are invest interested in investing in their local economy with small local businesses in that area that need investors. And so that's something more of us could do. We could help create Lions type um, groups in our own areas so that we can facilitate and um, increase the local investing going on. And then the at the bottom, the Local Investing Resource Center, that's a website you can look up. And that there's a, um, in that, let's see, 
the directory, if you look across the top of that image, you see on the far right, there's the word contact with the box around it. Before that is the directory. It's in that directory that you can find some local investor groups. So if you're looking to find other people that might be in your area that are in invest, look interested in investing locally and you wanna get hooked up, you can look there. They also include some of the local investment funds like the WASIF and the reinvestment fund that I mentioned earlier. And then these are um, two resources that are specific to self-direct, socially conscious investing in our self-directed retirement accounts. The first is the Next Egg, which is an online learning portal that um, where a number of us are coming together to learn of, together about investing outside of the stock market in these socially conscious investments, specifically through self-directed accounts, be it solo 401ks or um, you know self-directed IRAs. And we, there, it's a platform with the Mighty Networks space so we can ask questions and share information and there are learning webinars together. And then on the right is this book, Put Your Money Where Your Life Is, How to Invest Locally Using Self-Directed IRAs and Solo 401ks. So if you're interested in local investing, this is a great book. I actually bought 10 copies of this and gifted it to our economic development officer here, the head of our chamber of commerce here. So I'm really trying to get these conversations going. And I'm actually, there are a number of um, case studies in Put Your Money Where Your Life. So if you read it and you see the Florida case study, that's me. <laughs> uh, and then some other impact investing resources. These um, are resources that are broader that do talk some about investing in the stock market as well as um, investments off Wall Street. Green America is a, is a website and it's one of the, you know, longer, more established socially conscious money websites. So there's lots of, um, there are a lot of resources you can peruse at greenamerica.com and Activate Your Money is a really great book. Um, you know, as it says, the subtitle is Invest to Grow Your Wealth and Build a Better World. And I actually provided uh, some information to the author about self-directed retirement accounts. So it does touch a little bit on self-directed um, investing as well in that book. So, whew, okay, I've just run you through a lot of information. I hope you're not too overwhelmed. <laughs> I tend to drop a lot, but there's just so much potential in this space. And I'm happy to answer questions if you have them. I did wanna offer a few discussion questions as well. If any of you are already making socially conscious investments and you want to share some of the socially conscious investments you've made through your self-directed IRA, or if you know if there's a specific impact area you're most invest, interested in investing in. Are you interested in renewable energies? Is it social justice investing that gets you excited? Do you want to support local investing or regenerative investing or maybe something else? Renika, uh, I'll open up there. Maybe you can help me facilitate this part. Yeah, absolutely. So if you want to respond to Talora's uh, discussion question, go ahead and put those in the question box and I'll um, read it out loud. Um, if you have other questions as well, uh, feel free to put that in there. I do have um, some question that came in. Uh, Laura, I do wanna say, you know, just you're a great advocate for, you know, impact investing. This is just an immense value in terms of information and, and being a, a great resource. So thank you for presenting. Um, one of the questions that came in, and I'm still waiting for a response to your discussion question. So again, if you want to respond, go ahead and, and put your response to, to Laura's uh, discussion questions. One of the questions that came in um, relating to um, for the crowdfunding um, websites, for the crowdfunding platform, how do you go ahead and, and evaluate opportunities? Mm, okay, yes. <laughs> Very good question. Because, yes, the, just because these investing opportunities are being, you know, are made available on these crowdfunding platforms doesn't mean that they have done a tremendous amount of due diligence. And so it is up to us to do the due diligence and learn about that. That is not my strength. There are conversations and pockets out there where people are try to, trying to come together and do that, you know, and the next egg can be a helpful resource. And there are some other resources out there. What I've done, it's not the answer you're looking for because 
I do some due diligence. I, I have shared um, some of the prospective information with more conventional financial advisors that I know and gotten their input on it. I um, So that's one way. I largely for me, what I am doing in part also because of having this checkbook LLC self-directed IRA, I knew that I wanted to make a lot of smaller investments. That was that's my risk mitigation strategy. So I I more than doing the due diligence, I just try to make smaller investments. I won't say more, but as much as that's a big part of it. So I do seek out people who have more knowledge and more experience in me than me, but I also really try to minimize the potential for negative impact if it doesn't if that investment crowdfunding investment doesn't work out okay um i, I do want to respond to you know a couple of your dis discussion questions um in terms of me pers personally um i love the concept of local investing the local investing net initiative uh, something i do try to do um, I have a couple of, um, you know, responsible ETFs in, in, a, in a brokerage account, but I definitely, you know, know that there's opportunities for me to do more. Uh, so I'm going to take a look at a couple of the platforms that you referenced just to incorporate it more, um, more so um, into, into my self-directed account. Another question Great. that just came in, just bear with me, it says, um, what are the average return rates from, from these investments? It really varies. Um, I mean, again, I, I said earlier, you're not going, you're generally not going to be getting the 10% plus return. You know, st the steward platform, they, some of the, their rates vary depending on the farm they're lending to. You know, I think the highest I've seen is nine point something percent, but I think the platform itself takes a little bit of the return. Um, you know, these community investment funds, some of them, it also depends, especially with the community investment funds, it depends on how long you're leaving your money with them. You know, if you're looking for only six months to a year, you're going to often get a lower rate of return of maybe 1%. You know, if you can go longer with the money, you might get three or 4%. So it, it's between that range of like one to 10%. Not to say you can never get more, you know, what like with the crowdfunding, if you're investing in a socially conscious business, you know, that could have a much larger profit. Um, it just, you know, if they succeed as a startup, but they're also the riskiest kind of investment to make those probably those crowdfunding startups. Okay, I did get a response to your discussion question, so I'll read it out. It says, we're looking to help in setting up socially responsible funding for our assisted living homes. Uh, we're very successful offering a premium product, but due to the price of housing and interest rate, we're not able to affordably purchase property to help less fortunate. So that's someone responding to the discussion question in terms of, you know, the impact areas and um, what they're specifically interested in doing. That is so awesome. This is the perfect tweet. This is so needed. And you've just made my day, whoever <laughs> answered that. Because when I think about retirement planning, I mean, we're focused on these retirement accounts. Retirement planning is so much more than money, you know, especially on a, you know, in the time of climate change and with financial capital really being so fragile. These creative ways of thinking and investing in the solutions that will help make retirement better through investing in them through our self-directed IRA, I think are so such a, a key way of thinking and moving forward. Okay, uh, I think I have another question that came in, so just bear with me. Okay, so it says, um, what ESG regulations uh, that I need to be aware of and what do you think are the biggest challenges for ESG investing? I am not a great person to answer that. I have moved all of my money off of Wall Street. So I'm okay. much more knowledgeable about the non-Wall Street investing options. It says, where can I learn more about the environmental and social investing? I know you provided a list of books and resources, so I don't know if you want to 
just reiterate, but it says, where can I learn more about environmental and social investing? Okay, so let me scroll back. Again, this Activate Your Money book is a good one. Green America is a good one, a good website. Um, if you, I have, I have a regenerative investing course. If you're looking to learn more about these options off of Wall Street, this is a pay what you can um, video course on moving towards regenerative investing. And so I share some of what I shared here, but I go into a lot more and give more resources and um, options. So that's all available at the shop section of my website, richandresilientliving.com forward slash shop. So that would be another option for you. Um, the, I'm, I'm also co-author of this book, Growing Free, Financially Resilient and Economically Empowered, Building the Life of Your Dreams Without Losing Your Soul or Destroying the Planet. So this book wouldn't be so much what about what are the investing options for you through a self-directed IRA or retirement account, but it gets you, it moves more towards what I started to say um, a minute ago about how do we think more holistically beyond just retirement, saving money for retirement, how do we design our lives to be resilient in retirement? And, and, and even before retirement, how do we design these financially viable and resilient lives in ways that aren't harming other people or the planet? So those are some of the other resources I can share. Okay, the next question that came in, Laura, I think you're gonna um, share this anyway. It says, is it possible to get your contact information? Yes, very good. Here we go. <laughs> I'm at my website, richandresilientliving.com. You can send an email to me at laura at richandresilientliving.com. I am spreading the word of growing free and regenerative investing on Instagram and TikTok, less so on Pinterest. And I'm also on Facebook. Oh, wonderful. I think that covers um, all of the questions that came in. If there's any additional questions, feel free to go ahead and put those in now. But again, Laura, again, thank you so much. Uh, just immense value, um, you know, actually, you know, living, being a practitioner, leaving your imprint uh, in, in the most positive way. Let me, I think I just saw another, another question, just bear with me. No, more so a statement. Um, any, any parting words before we disconnect? Cause I know we're right at the top of the hour as well. I just, I would, I encourage you to, you know, learn more, you know, just make one investment, start with one investment. If this is overwhelming, you know, find the, the simple investment to make that's in line with your values. Think about what it is you want to, that's really important to you. Is it the renewables? Is it regenerative agriculture or whatever it is? And just take one tiny step or bite. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, the key is, you know, just getting started. So if you have questions, you want to learn more about self-direction, I'm happy to, you know, have that conversation with you. If you want to know more about, you know, impact investing or socially conscious investing, I would encourage you to reach uh, directly out to Laura. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, end today's webinar. This, again, is recorded. It will be up on our YouTube channel shortly, within 24 hours. Again, Laura, thank you so much for being our featured speaker today. Thank you for having me and inviting me to, to share this. Absolutely. Happy investing, everyone.